Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, we are recording the session so that we can post it online and have, that everybody see it. So Christy, thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you could just give us a little bit of an introduction of yourself and then we will um, move forward. Uh, buenos dias. Uh, esa es la traducción en español. Y bienvenidos a todo. Y gracias, Christy, para tomarte el tiempo de hacer la introducción. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Christy Sutherland. I'm with Prosperity Ag. Um, we're a grant consulting company that works for WFAN. Um, and we're going to present today about the food safety recording um, and specialty crops grant program. Uh, buenos días. Mi nombre es Christy Sutherland. Trabajo con Prosperity uh, HD. Es una compañía de consultas y estamos hablando hoy de la seguridad de la comida. I'm going to share my screen really quick so you guys can see my presentation. Voy a compartir mi pantalla así que pueden ver mi presentación. All right. Thank you guys so much for having me today. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to go through a slideshow that talks about the USDA's food safety certification for specialty crops. Um, if people have questions throughout the process, feel free to stop me and ask. Um, perfectly happy to answer any questions as they come up. This shouldn't take too long. Um, it's a pretty simplified process compared to other USDA programs. So, gracias por estar. Uh, vamos a ir a través hoy a la uh, certificación de la seguridad de las comidas por uh, uh, alimentos especiales. Y voy a mostrarle varias uh, um, imágenes en la pantalla. Y por favor, si tienen preguntas, se la notan, me la pueden hacer después. Pero tendría que ser bastante fácil porque eso no, no lleva mucho menos requerimiento de otro programa de Estados Unidos. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are with a uh, independent grant consulting company. Um, our, our company has been around since 2007, offering consulting services to farmers, um, agribusinesses, and those types of agencies. We're not related uh, directly with the USDA or the Farm Service Agency. Um, so we're here to present this information. Just know that this is not something that we are putting on. Uh, we are not providing the, the incentives, but we're just here to help uh, the WFAN folks try to understand how they can apply for this program. So, uh, como dijo, estoy con una compañía, uh, Prosperity AG, ha trabajado desde el 2007 y, está da, y da consulta a um, personas que hacen cultivos y uh, negocios de agriculturas y uh, para poder obtener una CEA certificación. Y para que sepan, no, son, no somos nosotros que decidamos, decidimos la regla, sino que la ayuda o los incentivos los ayudamos a entenderlo para poder aplicar la certificación. So this uh, specialty crop food certification, um, one of the important things is about the eligibility of this program. And so anybody that's looking to apply must meet the definitions uh, provided by the USDA of either a small or very small business. Um, and you also have to have paid eligible expenses either in 2022 or 2023 uh, for those certifications. Um, as you can see so, on the screen, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> los aplicantes tienen que uh, uh, cumplir con los requisitos de ser un negocio pequeño o un negocio muy pequeño y mm -hmm. haber pagado las gastos elegibles relacionado a las certificaciones del 2022 o 2023. So the USDA um, in this instance is defining small business as an entity whose average value of crops sold in the three-year period is no more than $500,000. And then a very small business is defined as uh, the average value of the crops in that same three-year period is no more than $250,000. La definición de la FSDE es que un, un negocio pequeño tiene una, um, productos 
promedio, la, el valor de un producto promedio vendido en, en un periodo de tres años, no más de 500 mil dólares. Y un negocio muy pequeño, el valor de producto vendido promedio en, en un periodo de tres años, en tres años, es no más de 225 mil dólares. All right. And then um, the types of sort of, or I'm sorry, the types of incentives that the USDA is offering for this um, includes the following types of costs. Um, you can see developing a food safety plan for first time certification, maintaining or updating an existing plan, uh, other kinds of certifications, certification upload fees, testing for products, soil or water, um, and then other types of training. So, los incentivos para la certificación de la seguridad de las comidas por SC um, uh, pueden recibir asistencia por los siguientes gastos. Desarrollar un plan de seguridad de comida por la prima, uh, para obtener por la primera vez una certificación de seguridad de la comida y mantener o actualizar un uh, plan de uh, seguridad de la comida que ya existe, certificación para la seguridad de la comida, uh, los gastos de obtener una certificación, um, prueba microbiológica para los productos, para la uh, tierra, y para el agua y um, entrenamiento. Uh, this chart is probably going to be the most helpful aspect of this program. It lays out exactly the types of incentives that they're offering for each type of um, category of expenses. You can see that there is a little bit of a different uh, it differs between if you're a historically underserved farmer and then all other applicants. The FSA office can help you determine these, um, or you can reference the um, details of the program. But this is a really great resource so you can see exactly how much of an incentive you may receive. So, esa tabla le demuestra qué tal, uh, qué, qué tipo de incentivo puede recibir y puedes uh, ver. Um, si ha sido históricamente un cultivador um, que, uh, que ha sido desatendido, van a tener mucho más uh, ayuda. Pero en general, esa es la tabla donde se van a referir para um, saber los detalles de los incentivos. One of the most important things to notice on this is most of these categories do have a maximum amount that the FSA will provide to you. Uh, with the exception of the development of the food safety plan for the first time, there's no maximum with this um, activity type. So that is definitely a huge incentive for a lot of folks that are looking to do that activity. So, como puede ver, toda esa categoría tiene un monto máximo excepto la primera categoría que para la, los agricultores que quieren tomar una certificación por la primera vez, no hay máximo. Entonces es un incentivo muy grande por ese tipo de personas. All right, and this uh, chart is available online. Um, it, we'll have this in the slides as they're presented as well. Um, but this is something that I would highly recommend that you take a look at even if you're not sure what exactly um, you're going to be pursuing yet, it could really help you make those decisions uh, moving forward. Y esa tabla, esa, esa tabla, uh, tablas va a ser disponible en línea y les sugiero mucho de mirarla aún si no está exactamente seguro en qué categoría o, uh, usted está <laughs> o para qué quiere aplicar. Um, a, a couple of important dates to keep in mind. Um, the application period is open now, um, and the applications do have to be submitted by January 31st of 2023. So we've got lots of time to get these things in order, but also I know how um, time moves this last half of the year. So keep in mind that everything has to be completed and documented by that January 31st date. 
So, esas son dos fechas importantes. El periodo de uh, para uh, submitir las aplicaciones está abierto, a la, la, abierto ahora y todas las aplicaciones tienen que ser entregadas completa, uh, documentada al uh, 31 de enero de 2023. Uh, tenemos mucho tiempo para poner las cosas en orden, pero sabemos que el tiempo pasa muy rápido y entonces acordarse que todo tiene que estar listo, presentado y documentado para el 31 de enero. I think one of the greatest things about this particular program is that the steps to apply for it are much more simplified than a lot of other USDA programs. Um, the key is to work with your local FSA office. Um, I've heard from a lot of folks that they will actually complete most of the paperwork either with you or for you. Um, so reaching out to them is the really important first step that I would recommend. So esos son los pasos para aplicar son muy fáciles, <laughs> al contrario de varios programas de USDA. Y uno de los pasos clave es trabajar con su oficial local de FSA, porque a veces lo pueden no solo ayudar, sino casi uh, completar ellos su aplicación. And if you don't know who your local FSA office is, um, I would recommend that you look them up. It's super easy to hop online. Um, you can do a, a FSA office locator. You can reach out to them by phone, um, or you could just stop by the office. Make sure you check the, the open hours, um, but they're there really to help you guys. So, si no sabe quién es su oficial local de FCA, pueden chequear en línea uh, para localizar uh, el oficina del FCA y pueden llamar o presentarse a la oficina durante la hora de negocio. This application includes four different forms. Um, depending on your history with the FSA, you may have a couple of these already on file. We will go through each of these. Um, I've got some screenshots of each of them, uh, but briefly, they are just the FSA 888, the AD 2047, the SF3881, and then the CCC 860. So, para completar la aplicación, hay que rellenar cuatro formularios y algunos de ustedes puede ser que ya tienen ese formulario presentado y son la, uh, for, el formulario 888 de FSA, el formulario 2047 de AD, el formulario 3881 de SF y el formulario 860 de CCC. The FSA 888 is going to be the form that is directly related to this project. Um, and so that's only going to be detailing the activities that are taking place for this program. Um, some of the other forms are more generalized forms about your entity or your farm itself. So, el uh, formulario 888 es el único que está detalladamente direccionado, relacionado con este programa. Y vas a contener, uh, vas a pedirle ese tipo de información detallada sobre su proyecto. Los otros formularios son más formulario que describe el tipo de negocio y otra um, información general. All right, a little bit more information about how to apply. A lot of times the FSA offices will ask for some supporting documents. These are only if they request them. I always recommend, even if they're not requesting them, maybe kind of gather them up so that you're ready. Um, you can see on the list here, we've got invoices, receipts, test results, any of the types of documents that relate to the activities that you're asking FSA to cover. So, a veces uh, la FSA pide cierto tipo de documento y no siempre, solamente si se lo piden, pero pueden pedir documento tipo factura pagada, recibo, <laughs> resultado de pruebas um, y otro documento relacionados. Okay, so we're going to start going through some screenshots so you guys can get an idea of exactly what you'll fill out on these screens. Keep in mind, this is kind of like dummy information. It's, it's some of it's my information, some of it's made up, but it gives you an idea of what uh, sections that you'll need to complete and what information to put in there. So, vamos a través ahora alguna captura de pantallas y eso es solamente para enseñarle 
cómo, qué van a, cómo se van a ver los formularios que tienen que rellenar, rellenar y cómo rellenarlo. So in this form is the FSA 888. As mentioned, this is specific to your project. Uh, we're going to pretend that I have my own farm. Um, so we're just going to put the name, address, whether or not you've participated in programs, phone, and email. So ese formulario 888 es específico uh, para su proyecto. Entonces le van a pedir su nombre su dirección, si ha participado en un programa y su uh, teléfono de contacto y correo electrónico. Uh, you will notice that in the upper right hand side, um, the sections that say one, two, three, four, those are left blank because that is going to be filled out by the FSA office themselves. La casilla que están arriba a la derecha uh, están en blanco porque van a ser rellenada por los oficiales de FSA. Um, a little bit farther down, we've got part B, um, and this is where we're going to fill out specifically what expenses we are asking the FSA to cover. You'll see that there's a lot of different options along the left hand side under that column 10A. That's where you can check. You can have more than one item depending on your activities. And then under 10B will be where you detail the expenses. So, ahora en la parte B del, for, del mismo for, formulario, es, uh, quiere que usted especifique <coughs> cuáles son los gastos que quiere uh, que la FSA le pague. Ven que hay varios en la columna 10A, die, uh, varias opciones. Puede usted pedir que se le pague más de una opción y en la columna 10B son los montos. Christy, I, yeah. I do. Um, so, for example, here you have $1,500 in food safety certification. And I don't remember if that was above or below the, the cap, the part, uh, you know, the, the cap. Okay. So, uh, acá hay $1,500 para certificación de seguridad de comida. Y no sé si es, es arriba o abajo del máximo. So should we put in the actual amount regardless of the cap or only up to the cap? That's a, that's a great question. So tendríamos que poner eh, cualquier amount, el monto que sea, sin uh, poner atención a cuál es el máximo o el mínimo, o tenemos que poner atención a qué es el máximo o el mínimo. Esa es una muy buena pregunta. So if you notice at the top, um, right underneath the black box, it does say the applicant completes columns 10A, 10B, 10C, and 10E. Um, 10F is what's going to be filled out by the FSA office, and they will be making that determination on the adjustment. You can get an idea of what it might be based on that chart, but we don't have to do that calculation ourselves. So, si puede ver abajo de la parte negra del título, dice que uh, hay que rellenar, uh, el aplicante tiene que rellenar la columna 10A, 10B, 10C y 10E. La columna 10F la van a rellenar los oficiales de la FSA y son los ajustes que van a tener que hacer basado en el uh, máximo o mínimo requerido. O sea que ellos se van a preocupar de hacer eso. Nosotros no nos tenemos que preocupar. Also, you can keep in mind that this is something that the FSA office may help you fill out as well. So even if you were to bring all of your receipts, invoices, those types of things, um, and this form filled out, and if some reason you did it wrong, just because you're sending it in doesn't mean they're going to say, no, you filled this form out wrong. You don't get this money. They'll, they'll help make sure that it's exactly what it needs to be and that things are in the right spot. So, y también se acuerda que el oficial del FSA le va a ayudar a rellenar eso y aunque usted traiga todo su recibo y su factura y rellena un monto que es más del máximo, no es que le van a decir, no, usted se equivocó, no le vamos a dar recurso si no la van a ayudar a, a arreglar los montos, ajustar los montos. I think it would be really important to actually put in how much these things cost regardless, because then they can see yes. that, you know, your, your adjustment amount is not enough for, you know, people who are, who are, you know, pinching pennies. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> eh, sería muy bueno más bien a poner cuáles son los el monto verdadero de sus gastos, así que ellos pueden ver en realidad cuánto le costa sostener el negocio y uh, no no y, y por qué usted está pidiendo un cierto monto. Yeah, I, I would say make sure that if you're not comfortable filling this out, um, I would still take a look at the forms, maybe download them, fill out some of the basic info. But if you're unsure about how to do this certification part B, uh, take it into your FSA office or talk to them over the phone um, and see if they'll help you with that. So, yo le recomiendo que aunque no se sientan confortable con rellenar ese formulario, que lo bajen y lo traigan a la oficina del FSA porque la pueden ayudar a rellenarlo. All right. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, you'll see that in sections 11 and 12, it asks if you're a small business or very small business. Um, I neglected to check the no. I should check no if I'm if I'm not a small business. Um, I'm just pretending that I am a very small business. So I checked yes in that section. So como ves, la pregunta número 11 es si es un negocio uh, pequeño o muy pequeño. Y yo le puse un uh, donde dice negocio muy pequeño. All right. So now that is um, the extent of that first form. Oh, go ahead, Jules. Okay. There's a there's a question in the uh, chat. Are the food safety plan costs farm labor costs or costs to get consultant help? And I was about to say, I think it's my understanding that it can be both. Your it thoughts? can be. Yes, it can be both. Um, again, you might uh, confer with your FSA office, but if you have to have an employee that needs to get that certification and they spend time on it, that can also be included. So, so no, la pregunta es si uh, el plan de la seguridad de la comida cobre, uh, cubre el costo del trabajo de un agricultor o también el costo de uh, agarrar consultores y dicen que pueden uh, cubrir los dos. Yeah, so the, so the consultant fees plus um, any fees that are incurred by your employees could both be included uh, for most of these activities. So, las gastos de, de consultas uh, y los gastos que uh, para pagar sus uh, empleados, los dos tipos de gastos pueden ser incluidos en esos montos. So, Uh, what if it's a like a one person farm and the proprietor needs to spend like 20 hours building the food safety plan? Um, could that farmer put in, you know, my own hourly wage is like 25 bucks an hour. So 25 times 20 is, you know, $500 for that for the farmer's time. So, por ejemplo, si um, uno, uno que quiere aplicar es un, un negocio pequeño de una persona y gasta 20 horas para completar esa aplicación, uh, puede poner su 20 horas como gasto al precio de 25 dólares ahora por gasto. Eso sería requerir una, uh, un gasto de, uh, que le cubran un gasto de 500 dólares. Yeah, so those types of fees would be allowable. You would have to make sure that you show proof that those activities took place and, and give a justification to the number of hours. Um, again, it might not be a bad idea before you get started to reach out to FSA and let them know what you're thinking. Um, and they might be able to give you some direction if there's some things that you might need to know about that ahead of time. So, uh, si eso sería permitido, pero tiene que traer prueba de la actividad que usted desarrolló y una justificación y no sería una mala idea uh, consultarse con los oficiales de FSA y contarle lo que está pensando de incluir acá porque ellos le pueden dar consejo o dirección. All right. So we're going to move to the next form. Um, so this is the AD 2047. Um, this is something that if you've worked with FSA in the past, they most likely already have the information on file. This is just general information about you as a farm or as a business. So, so part A uh, will be la first. Parte, sorry, sorry. 
No, go ahead. Uh, el formulario AD247 son informaciones generales <laughs> sobre usted y su negocio. Si usted ha trabajado anteriormente con F6, seguramente es muy probable que usted ya haya uh, rellenado ese formulario y ellos ya lo tengan. So the part A will be either that you're a new customer or you're updating existing customer records. Very basic information, the customer's name, the business type, uh, number, whether or not you have a different phone number for home or work, and then also if you have a telephone number for um, a mobile. So, eso la parte A sería si usted es un cliente nuevo o si quiere actualizar y la información de un cliente ya existente y es el nombre, el, su nombre personal, el nombre de su negocio y los varios números de teléfonos. All right, and then the next uh, section down, you'll put your email address, um, whether or not you want to get information via email, taxpayer ID. Um, if you are a minor, you have to put your birth date, citizens, citizenship status, and then origin, originating country if you're foreign. So, después su correo electrónico, si quiere recibir información confidencial por correo electrónico, su uh, número de identificación de uh, impuestos, uh, su fecha de nacimiento, si usted es menor de edad, si es residente de Estados Unidos y de qué país viene si no es de Estados Unidos. And then below that, we've just got some basic demographic information. Um, you'll fill those out. You can also say that you do not want to provide that information if, if that's not something you're interested in. Más abajo hay información demográfica que usted puede rellenar o no rellenar si no se siente cómodo en rellenar. All right, down a little bit lower, you're going to put um, whether or not the customer has interest in more than one program. So if you're looking at something for FSA and um, the NRCS, you can fill that out there. Um, you will um, state whether or not you're, you're producing in more than one county and list them here. Um, and then you'll sign, put your title and the date. So, después eh, en esa parte le, le están pidiendo si quiere aplicar por más de un programa, no solamente la FCA. Por ejemplo, acá dije que quiero aplicar al programa NRCS. Si uh, su uh, producción está en un condado solamente o en más de un condado. Y después la firma y la fecha. And then part B is the section that is filled out by the FSA um, staff members. So that's not a section that you guys will need to fill out at all. So la parte B es la van a rellenar los uh, oficiales de FSA. Así que ustedes no se tienen que preocupar de eso. Okay, and now we're going to move on um, to the ACH vendor payment enrollment form. Basically, this form is, um, it has your bank account information so that the USDA, FSA, they can direct deposit the amount that you're requesting into your bank account. So, eso formulario es uh, la, el formulario de inscripción. <coughs> Disculpe, el formulario mm -hmm. de inscripción para pago. Y um, prácticamente le está pidiendo su uh, información de banco, así que el FCA le puede hacer un depósito directamente a su banco. This top section that says agency information, again, this is filled out by the FSA office, so you won't need to fill any of this section out. Oftentimes, the FSA will provide this form to you, um, and they may have already filled out this section um, in advance. Esa parte que dice información de la agencia es algo que van el FCA va a rellenar y a veces cuando le mandan esa información, esa parte ya está rellenada por ello. So the next two sections are what you will be responsible for. The payee company information will be um, in relation to either you as the producer or the, the producer business. So name, um, taxpayer ID, address, um, the contact name and then a phone number. So la primera parte es su información personal, la información de su negocio. Eh, entonces sería el nombre, eh, el número de, 
pago de el número de en, en pago de impuestos su dirección su nombre personal y su teléfono and then this bottom section the financial institution information a lot of folks will think that this is something they have to take to their bank to get filled out but in all actuality this is something that you as the business owner are, can fill out on your own you have all of this information so la segunda parte uh, alguna persona piensa que tienen que lle llevarlo al banco para informarlo pero en realidad si usted uh, usted tiene ya en su posesión toda información toda esa información o sea que lo puede rellenar usted mismo so you'll put the um, bank name and the bank's address in those first two sections, um, the ACH coordinator name, which would essentially be your banker or whoever could receive the automated payments, and then a phone number. Primera línea, el nombre de su banco, la segunda la dirección. Eh, el coordinador hace hecho, o sea, la persona que podría recibir ese monto al banco y el número de teléfono de esa persona. And then you'll want the nine digit routing number for your bank, the title of your account. Um, so a lot of times it'll probably say the business and then checking account. Um, your deposit number. So that's like your bank account number. And then you'll want to check whether or not it's a checking, savings, or a lockbox account. Después tiene que poner su nombre de enrutamiento de su banco, el nombre que está en la cuenta de banco, el número de la cuenta de banco, si es una cuenta de cheque o de ahorros. And then at the very bottom where it says signature and title of authorized official, if you're the business owner, you can sign this and put your title and then you'll want to put your phone number. Y abajo, si usted es el dueño de la, uh, del negocio, quiere poner uh, su nombre, firma y el título que usted tiene en el negocio. And those are the forms. Um, there's one more form that uh, specifies whether or not you're socially disadvantaged. Um, I don't have that one here. It looks like the USDA might be updating it. Um, but I, again, I would highly recommend that you reach out to FSA um, and explain to them what you're preparing to do and see what forms you might be able to fill out even before um, you're ready to give them those final ones. También hay un formulario que usted puede rellenar si tiene de venta desventajas sociales y uh, por eso yo les sugiero que es, contacten su oficial de FSA porque ellos van a tener esos formularios adicionales. And I'm happy to answer any questions that folks might have. Um, even if you don't have them now, my contact information is on the screen. Y estoy, uh, soy disponible para responder preguntas que la persona, ustedes, la persona pueden tener. Y si no tienen pregunta ahora, uh, me la pueden mandar a mi correo electrónico que ahora ven en la pantalla. Great, thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Tienen más preguntas? No. Okay, well, we will be putting this webinar um, on our website and you can certainly email us as well as Christy uh, with any questions that you have, uh, even if it's how do I find my local FSA office, we can help you with that. So vamos a poner el contenido de ese webinar en nuestro correo electrónico. Así que ustedes pueden mandar un correo electrónico a nosotros y también a Christy y también con preguntas tan simple como cómo voy a encontrar mi oficina local de FSA. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording. Muchas gracias. Voy a parar la grabación.